Hey, welcome back. So today I'll be talking about 3D printers and we'll be going over all the upgrades I've done to my Ender 3 Pro and show how you can transform a budget printer like this one into a great printer that produces flawless results every single time. It's been over a year since I've made any adjustments at all to it, not even a bed leveling or anything, and it's been a stable workhorse this entire time. Honestly, it's so good now that I can just push print and walk away without worrying about failed prints at all. The quality of the prints and the speed I can run it at is exceptionally good. As you can see in this footage I recorded earlier, for this one I set a print speed of 120 millimeters per second in Kira, and I could probably get even faster results if I modified the acceleration, which is something I'm currently looking into doing. Now the Ender 3 series is one of the most popular printers on the market and is highly regarded as being one of the best for beginners who want to get into 3D printing. That's because it has a low price tag while still providing good performance, but it's definitely not perfect. And there are a number of things holding it back from being a truly great printer. Fortunately, all these things can be upgraded by the user relatively easily. So today I'll be going over a list of all the upgrades I recommend doing if you own one of these printers. Let's start by looking at the different variations of the Ender 3 model. The one I have is the Pro version, which comes with a better power supply and a few minor differences, but for the most part it's pretty much identical to the standard model. Later revisions such as the V2 had more substantial upgrades that justified a new version but even that one could use a number of mods as well. This one was my first 3D printer that I purchased over four years ago, and I ran it at stock for about a year before doing a few upgrades. Some of these mods were out of necessity since a few of the stock parts are poor quality and either broke or wore out over time. Some of the other upgrades I did weren't exactly necessary, but they made a substantial difference in performance, reliability, and quality of the prints. And then there's a few upgrades that don't impact performance or quality, but are just nice to have for convenience. Most of these upgrades are products that you can purchase at places like eBay, Amazon, or Micro Center, but there are a few that you can print out yourself. I'll be providing links in the description for all the products I'll be showing today, and we'll also provide the links to the Thingiverse parts that you can print yourself. Now I'll be going through this list in no particular order, but I'll be saving the more customized upgrades for later in the video. So let's get started and first talk about the bed. Normally the Ender 3 comes with a textured bed that doesn't have great adhesion which can frequently lead to failed prints. So upgrading to a glass bed should help a lot if you're having adhesion problems. If you want to take it a step further, I suggest getting a PEI sheet like the one I have here. PEI offers the best adhesion which can make a big difference especially when using PETG filament. Personally I prefer PETG over PLA because I found it deals with heat and direct sunlight better and is less likely to warp over time. But one of the drawbacks to using PETG is that it's harder to print with because it's more prone to losing adhesion with the bed. But ever since I added the PEI sheet, printing with PETG has become just as reliable as PLA. Another useful upgrade that can improve reliability is replacing the springs. If you find yourself needing to re-level your bed frequently, then chances are it's because the stock springs are poor quality. Upgrading them will help keep the bed more stable between prints. To further improve print reliability, you could also add a BL touch. While it's not necessary to get good printing results, it's still nice to have and will make your life easier once you get it set up. The BL touch allows your printer to do auto bed leveling, where the probe measures the Z offset at various points of the bed and creates a mesh of it that it stores in memory. This is useful because most beds aren't perfectly flat, so the printer compensates for this and as a result it improves contact between your print and the bed, resulting in better reliability. Some of Creality's printers already includes a BL touch, or a CR touch which is Creality's version of the bed probe, but many of their printers including mine don't include one. 
You might have noticed the one I have says 3D Touch instead of BL Touch. That's because I have a knockoff version which was considerably cheaper than the real one, but still provides accurate results. However, I'll be leaving a link to the genuine BL Touch since not all clones perform as well as mine, and it's hard to tell which ones are good. To attach it to your printer, you also need the appropriate bracket. Keep in mind the Ender 3 V2 requires a different bracket than the previous models. You can purchase a model that already comes with a bracket, or purchase the bracket on its own, or print one out like I did here. Another upgrade I recommend doing is replacing the stock hot end with an all metal hot end, especially if you're planning to print with higher temperature filaments such as PETG or ABS. If you don't plan to print with higher temperature filaments, then this upgrade isn't necessary but still nice to have. Upgrading to an all metal hot end will result in better temperature consistency, which will help ensure the filament extrudes at a steady rate. You also want to replace the nozzle about once every year or two, depending on how frequently you use your printer since the nozzles wear out over time. Brass nozzles are fine for most filaments. But if you're using an abrasive filament such as glow-in-the-dark or wood filaments where additional particles are added to give a cool effect, then you'll want to get a hardened steel nozzle for increased durability. Eventually, you'll also need to replace the hot end fan and the part cooling fan, since these will wear out over time as well. You can get better quality fans that have more airflow and lower noise than the stock models, but those will be quite expensive. Which is why I replaced both of these with fans that are more or less the same as the stock ones. It would have been nice to get quieter ones since these are by far the loudest parts on the printer now, but they still work well. Speaking of airflow, you might have noticed the hot end shroud has openings at the bottom that allow air to blow on the print in a way that isn't exactly desirable. So printing out this cover will help ensure the airflow hits the nozzle like it's supposed to. To be honest, I'm not sure how useful this part really is, but it seems to help at least a little bit. If you decide to print it, I recommend printing this part with something other than PLA, since this area can get pretty hot. I printed mine in PETG and used silicone adhesive to attach it. If you're feeling adventurous, then you could also print out an entirely new shroud. There's quite a few different designs you can find on Thingiverse for this some of which allow you to use bigger fans. I haven't done this myself since I'm happy with how it's performing right now, but I'm considering doing it in the future so I can use thicker fans that are quieter. You might also want to consider going direct drive as well, which is an upgrade I haven't done to my Ender 3, but I have done to my Ender 5 Plus. Doing this can improve performance and quality of prints, this is something I'm considering adding to my Ender 3 at some point, but it's certainly not necessary, and one of the drawbacks is that it adds weight to the gantry. Let's now look at the Bowden tube. If you're planning to print with filaments other than PLA, then you should definitely upgrade this. This tube carries the filament directly into the hot end, but the stock tube is made out of a material that doesn't hold up so well with higher temperatures. Now let's move over to the extruder. The stock extruder is low quality and made out of plastic. Mine actually broke off after about a year of use, so I highly recommend replacing it with a metal one. To make loading and unloading the filament easier, I also recommend printing out a knob like this one. Now let's talk about the filament spool and this little roller guide that I printed here. An annoying problem with the stock setup is that the filament has a tendency to rub against the Z-axis, and as a result the filament gets slowly grinded away by it. Over time, the debris from the filament will build up in this area and make a mess. That's what this roller is for. It's a filament guide that ensures the filament goes directly into the extruder without grinding against the Z-axis. There are actually a number of different filament guides you can find on Thingiverse. However, these all lead to the same problem, since now the filament will rub up against the guide instead of the Z-axis. That's why I highly recommend the roller guide instead, since the wheel will rotate instead of rubbing against the filament as it passes through. It's also a good idea to move the filament spool from the top to the side like I did, since this will lower the printer's center of mass and make it more stable. 
Now let's talk about the motherboard. This is another upgrade that's not necessary but I highly recommend doing, especially if your stock motherboard uses non-silent motor drivers. A motherboard with silent drivers will dramatically reduce the amount of noise your printer makes. Creality makes upgraded boards that come with these silent drivers, which will work well. But Big Tree Tech makes some excellent boards and I highly recommend getting one of theirs instead. They make a variety of different boards that come in different sizes, but the best drop-in replacement for the Ender 3 is the SKR Mini E3 version 3.0. Not only are the drivers silent, but they're also more accurate, which means you can get better print quality while also printing at faster speeds. You also might want to consider upgrading the motherboard fan to something that's a bit more quieter like I did. But in order to do this, you'll probably need to remove a piece of metal from the cover in order to fit a different size fan there. It's kinda hard to explain, but you'll know what I'm talking about after removing the fan. But now let's move on to the slightly more customized upgrades that I did. The power supply has an internal fan that's temperature controlled and will occasionally ramp up while the printer is in use, and it can get pretty loud. So I decided to add an additional fan here to help keep things cool, and as a result the internal fan won't need to ramp up. Since the Ender 3's power supply outputs 24 volts, I purchased a 24 volt fan. But it turns out this fan was pretty loud when running at 24 volts, so I decided to add a voltage regulator that drops the voltage down to 12 volts, which means the fan will run much quieter. You can find these regulators on Amazon or eBay for just a few bucks each. I'll be talking more about voltage regulators in future videos, so if you're interested in learning more about circuits then be sure to subscribe to the channel. Adding this 12 volt regulator also allowed me to include an LED strip at the top of the frame, which is a nice thing to have when printing at night, and I think it looks pretty cool too. I designed and printed the box that houses the regulator and included a switch on top so I can turn the LED strip on and off. Now the last thing I wanted to talk about isn't a physical upgrade, but actually a firmware upgrade. By default these printers run on the Marlin firmware, which works fine. But if you want to get the most out of your printer, then you should consider loading the Clipper firmware. Clipper offers more advanced features and allows you to easily change configurations from a file on your computer without needing to recompile the firmware and flash the printer each time, which is extremely convenient and saves a lot of time. The only catch is that Clipper can't run directly from the printer's motherboard. It requires a computer to run the printer. Single board computers are a popular choice for this, but you can also run Clipper on any desktop, PC, or laptop running Linux. This means you can control the printer from an easy to use, browser based interface, such as Octoprint, Mainsail, or Fluid. The easiest way to install all this software is by using something called Kiaa. I think that's how it's pronounced at least. It stands for Clipper Installation and Update Helper and can be found on GitHub. I'll leave the link in the video description along with a good tutorial I found on how to get it all set up. This installation script also makes it extremely easy to set up multiple printers to run off a single computer, so it's a natural choice for people who are running several printers. And finally, it's worth mentioning that in order to get great prints, you also need to use the correct slicer settings, such as nozzle temperature, speed, retraction, and things like that. However, that's outside the scope of this video, and there's already quite a few other videos out there that explain all this in detail. But if you'd still like me to make my own recommendations video for those settings, then feel free to drop a comment and let me know, and I'll add it to the bucket list. Also, if you found the video helpful, then be sure to give it a thumbs up, and also consider subscribing to the channel if you're interested in seeing more tech-related content. I've also done quite a few upgrades to my Ender 5 Plus printer, so if you're curious on seeing a video about that one, then drop a comment and let me know. But anyway, that's all for today. I hope all of you have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.